Dear colleague, welcome to these courses on stereotactic functional lesional procedures. These courses will focus on radiofrequency lesioning. Other lesional techniques such as gamma knife, focus ultrasound, or laser interstitial thermotherapy will be dealt with in future courses. Before the DBS era, functional stereotactic procedures were done with lesions, mainly radiofrequency lesions, by which the tip of a rigid electrode is heated and the surrounding brain is coagulated. Lesions are non-expensive and do not require, per se, a lifelong follow-up. The patient needs to be awake during surgery, of course. Most often, the lesion can only be performed on one side of the brain only, except in lesions for psychiatric indications, and the risk of complication is higher than for deep brain simulation. Today, radiofrequency lesionings have been mostly replaced with DBS. Stereotactic lesions and DBS have different advantages and disadvantages that will differ in how well they are adapted to the specific needs and wishes of the individual patient and the neurologist, of course, as well as to the skills and preferences of the neurosurgeon and, of course, to the health care system. One of the most important limitations with lesional surgery is that simultaneous bilateral lesions in the thalamus and basal ganglia should not be performed. Occasionally, after careful consideration, a staged bilateral surgery may be possible. In these lectures, only unilateral procedures for movement disorders will be discussed. But please note that simultaneous bilateral lesions in the anterior capsule or cingulum for OCD and depression are well tolerated. Okay, what procedures do we have? Now please note that the detailed indications for the various procedures listed below will be provided in the section Indications Procedures as well as in the lectures on the respective procedures. Now, lesional procedures for Parkinson's disease and essential tremor include beam thalamotomy or subthalamotomy for tremor dominant Parkinson and essential tremor, and here the same indication as for beam or caudal zona inserta DBS for tremor dominant PD and ET. Then, pallidotomy and its indication in PD are the same as for GPI DBS and also the same for STN DBS for PD but with more liberal inclusion criteria concerning high age and borderline cognition. Also subthalamic nucleotomy that is lesions of the STN and the indications here are the same as for STN DBS for PD. Then lesional procedure for dystonia, pallidotomy, However, the modern experience of pallidotomy for dystonia is limited, but the indications are the same as for GPI DBS for dystonia. Uh, thalamotomy in the ventral oral anterior and pallidothalamic tractotomy are emerging, but these procedures are still not common, and separate lectures will later be added. And finally, lesional procedures for OCD and depression, capsulotomy or cingulotomy, the indications of which are the same as for DBS in the internal capsule or bed nucleus of the stria terminalis for OCD. Now, is stereotactic ablative surgery necessary? Well, in countries where most people cannot afford DBS, then lesions are a valuable option. Lesions are necessary. In countries where the cost of DBS is not an issue for the patient, lesions are still a valuable option in selected patients if the surgeon is skilled and can correctly identify and reach the intended target. Considering the high number of misplaced DBS electrodes in the literature, 
it is likely that the number of irreversible side effects would increase dramatically if neurosurgeons without proper training suddenly switched from DBS to performing lesions. Considering the above, and since lesioning in movement disorders is a unilateral procedure, it is likely that the number of lesions performed in high-income countries will be very limited relative to the number of DBS. However, a functional stereotactic surgeon ought to be acquainted in how to perform a radiofrequency lesion because sometimes this may be life-saving as in the case of patients with severe dystonic storm or patients with malignant Parkinsonian syndrome who because of infection or other reason cannot receive DBS. The advent of DBS has led to a decrease in the number of neurosurgeons who can perform lesions. Lesions are a valuable tool in the armamentarium of the stereotactic functional neurosurgeon. And in order to try to attend to this unfortunate loss of knowledge, I have participated together with Reese Cosgrove, Takao Mitaira, and Jean Regis in the organization of a regular courses on the novel art of lesioning. In collaboration with my colleague Patrick Blomstedt and other distinguished colleagues, we will provide two internet-based courses at the Stereotactic Academy, where we will attempt to provide a comprehensive introduction to the field of lesional surgery. The first course will cover common stereotactic lesions for movement disorder, both basic lesional techniques as well as pallidotomies and thalamotomies will be detailed. Further, two lectures on subthalamotomy and subthalamic nucleotomy are in preparation. The second course will deal with various lesional procedures for psychiatric disorders. We have also added a lecture on lesions for epilepsy even though this is, of course, not a psychiatric condition. Thus, we welcome you to these courses, and we hope that you will find them somehow useful. Thank you.